The MIM-104 Patriot, an air defense system manufactured by Raytheon to counter airborne threats like tactical ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and of course, aircraft. With its ANMPQ-53 radar, ANMSQ-104 engagement control station, and the M901 launching station housing the MIM-104 Patriot missiles, they're a deadly combination in a theater of war. The system was the first in the U.S. arsenal that could employ lethal autonomy, meaning it could operate without little or no human input at all. But the Patriot has a bad record among pilots, and I'm not just talking about the enemy. This missile system would cause the deaths of three pilots in two separate friendly fire incidents, two Royal Air Force and one U.S. Navy. Before we get into that, let's discuss the operational history of the Patriot for a little. This video will be timestamped, so you're welcome to skip ahead. The Patriot has a backronym, meaning phased array tracking radar to intercept on target. It was deployed in the Persian Gulf War, Iraq War, and some Saudi Arabian Yemeni conflicts. During Operation Desert Storm in the Gulf War, the system allegedly engaged 40 Iraqi Scuds. These claims were met with controversy when late U.S. President George H.W. Bush said that the success rate was 97% in shooting these scuds down, while a Theodore Postal stated saying that the success rate was well below 10%, maybe even zero. The missile's warhead, or debris, slammed into the barracks as troops were sitting down to dinner. The whole thing's gone. Everybody in it? It's either wounded or dead. How many people were inside? About 130, maybe. There's 53 for sure that was my On February 25th, 1991, during the Gulf War, a Iraqi Al Hussein Scud hit a U.S. Army barracks in Dharan, Saudi Arabia, killing 28 soldiers and injuring more than 100. The Patriot missile system operating near there failed to engage the Scud due to a glitch in the weapon control system causing inaccurate tracking which became worse the longer the system operated. The Israelis were the first to figure this out the more their system ran for eight hours. They handed the information over to U.S. Army officials who then updated the software. The software updates only got to the Patriot site defending Duran a day after the incident. The Gulf War ended February 28, 1991. On February 24, 2018, a Syrian Su-24 NATO call sign fitter made its way one mile into Israeli airspace before being shot down by a Patriot missile. And now for why you're really here. On the 22nd of March 2003, a Royal Air Force Panathia Tornado, GR-4A, known as Zulu Gulf 710, call sign Yahoo 75, prepares to take off from Ali Al Salim Air Base in Kuwait. The pilot is Flight Lieutenant Kevin Barry Main, and his navigator is Flight Lieutenant David Reese Williams. They are participating in Operation Telic, flying as part of a package of coalition aircraft. Prior to engine start, the ground crew checks the systems including the IFF system or Identification Friend or Foe. They confirm that it is working correctly. Kevin Main and David Williams take off, join the package, release their weapons, and return to Ali Al Salim. Unbeknownst to them, their return would be their demise. On the ground is a Patriot missile battery known as Battery Charlie from the 5th Battalion 52nd Air Defense Artillery. The system, operating autonomously, begins to track Yahoo 75. The system assumes that Yahoo 75 is an anti radiation missile. This is due to the way they approach the airbase. The Patriot crew sees that Yahoo 75 is an anti-radiation missile and not a friendly aircraft. They begin to interrogate Yahoo 75 and there is no response. The Patriot crew determines that Yahoo 75 is a missile and they pose a threat to the site and the people on the ground. Having met all parameters, they open fire. The missile intercepts Yahoo 75 and hits the aircraft, killing both Flight Lieutenant Kevin Mann and David Williams instantly. There was no attempt made to eject. An RAF Board of Inquiry report was conducted in parallel with the U.S. Army investigations into the incident. 
Many factors contributed to the incident. The Patriot system identified ZG-710 as a anti-radiation missile the way it approached the base. The Patriot crews are trained to open fire in self-defense, react quickly, and engage and trust the Patriot system. If the Patriot crews had delayed firing, ZG-710 would have been reclassified as its flight path changed. The Patriot system was also lacking communication equipment for a quote-unquote bigger picture of the airspace for situational awareness. Before the engagement, ZG-710's IFF transponder had a fault. There were procedures put in place if an aircraft's IFF transponder stopped working. But Kevin Main and David Williams had no way of knowing if theirs wasn't working. The Patriot battery was interrogating in Mode 4, an encrypted form of IFF, but not Mode 1, which was not loaded in Battery C at the time. Mode 1 is an unencrypted form of IFF used by all coalition aircraft during the Iraq War. The RAF Board of Inquiry concluded that the rules of engagement were not robust enough to prevent friendly aircraft from being classified as an anti-radiation missile. Autonomous operation of the Patriot battery was a factor. A lack of IFF Mode 1 codes increased the probability of the accident. Airspace routing, airspace control measures, and a breakdown in planning and communications were a contributing factor. And further work should be conducted to research the failure modes, reliability, and serviceability of the Tornado IFF system. And many more. If you'd like to read up on the actual report, I'll leave it in the description below. Just two days later, another incident would occur with a Patriot site, but this time it wasn't shooting. It was being shot at. There's not much information about this, but an F-16 CJ was flying over Najaf in Iraq when he's locked up by a Patriot site. The Patriot site is Battery Echo from the 5th Battalion, 52nd Air Defense Artillery. The pilot, believing he's being targeted by an Iraqi missile site, takes action. He fires an AGM-88 anti-radiation missile at the Patriot site. The radar sensor dish is destroyed and put out of action by the missile. Fortunately, no one was hurt on the ground. The pilot said that he didn't know it was a friendly radar he was locking onto. Other pilots did show their frustration with the Army with them locking onto their own aircraft. With one of these pilots stated saying, that's one less radar they can't target us with anymore. On April 2nd, 2003, tragedy would strike again. Lieutenant Nathan Dennis White was a U.S. Navy pilot serving on board the USS Kitty Hawk. He and his wingman take off from the flight deck armed with bombs to support troops moving in on Baghdad. Before his mission, he emailed his family. Part of that email, he talked about the one thing he had to avoid was not just enemy fire, but friendly fire. You could already see where this is going. They head into the night to South Central Iraq, release their bombs, and head back for the Kitty Hawk. Around midnight, as they fly over the Kabbalah Gap, he's locked up by a Patriot battery. The battery that has Lieutenant White locked up is Battery Echo from the 5th Battalion, 52nd Air Defense Artillery. The Patriot crew believes that White's aircraft is a enemy missile. Believing this, they take action. Lieutenant White sees two flashes on the ground through his night vision goggles. He goes defensive and says on his radio he's taking evasive action. He manages to dodge the first missile but not the second. The Patriot missile slams into his aircraft's nose, killing him instantly. His jet crashes into a lake west of Karbala. His wingman returns to the Kitty Hawk safe. Lieutenant White's remains would be recovered ten days later and he was buried with full military honors. A very unfortunate end for three brave airmen. It all seemed completely preventable. Akika White, the widow of Lieutenant Nathan White, she sued Raytheon, but military contractors are immune to certain lawsuits. I can't really find anything on that case, but if someone else can, I would like to see if she won. Making this, I had to work with what I had. There was no official report that I could find on the F-16 CJ and Lieutenant Nathan White. So if you have anything to add, feel free. If you enjoyed, you know what to do. If you didn't, you know what to do. I'll see you in the next one.